What is up you guys? Glitches here coming at you with another Dauntless video. But first, if you enjoy quality gaming content or informational videos like the one I'm posting today, consider hitting that subscribe button and turning on notifications so you don't miss any of my future uploads. And if you enjoyed today's video, then be sure to smash that like button, comment down below. As always, I appreciate your guys' feedback, makes me a better content creator, and helps make videos you guys actually want to watch. Now, with this video today, I'm going to go over the full patch notes that are coming with patch 1.5.4. Got some juicy details for some stuff that you guys have been waiting for for a while now. A lot of people have been commenting it on my previous videos, asking questions about it, and it revolves around heroic dyes. We still don't know any information on the exotics yet, but for dyes, it looks like we're getting behemoth die rumors. I had a feeling they were going to be coming back this way uh, with all the transmog rumors that have been coming out, but uh, at least it's not RNG based. So looking to expand your die collection with patch 1.5.4. It brings back four behemoth dies, Grievance, Plume, Eclipse, and Supernova, and introduces a more reliable way to get them instead of crossing your fingers and hoping for good RNG. You can now guarantee a die rumor drop by meeting certain secret requirements during battle. So it looks like while we're fighting these different behemoths that would typically drop the die uh, recipe for it, uh, we have to do some secret combination, defeat the behemoth in a certain way, and it will guarantee us a drop uh, for these uh, heroic dies. So really cool there it's adding some more content to the game and making it not rng based i remember back in the day running what seemed like hundreds of hero cunts and would never get drops for some of them so i'm good that it's more reliable now and it's a lot better system uh, moving on the paladin of vilmark armor set has been reworked after listening to the feedback of the community we've reworked the visual effects on the paladin of vilmark chest piece players can now bask in the lights of the aurora borealis so a lot of people were complaining about this and uh, commented on it. it. Didn't really match the uh, look of the concept art very closely. And it was just a transparent cape we had for a while. Uh, so it does look like they revamped the particle effects on the chest piece now to have a really cool particle Aurora Borealis simulation on it. So a really neat uh, redo there. I'm glad they updated that. Looks a lot better in my opinion. Uh, moving on to new journal entries. The in-game journal continues to expand. You can now find all Flameborn and Spore Struck Behemoth variants in the journal. The entries will unlock when you next encounter the Behemoths. So if you don't have them yet, you're gonna have to fight them again to finally unlock them. For quality of life updates, for gameplay, Gruk Gruks will no longer attack a player if they are close to a Behemoth. This is amazing. I can't even count how many times I got flanked by a random rolling pig, uh, but they will wait for their moment just out of sight, always waiting. <laughs> Pretty funny there. So yeah, definitely good change of pace for gameplay there. Uh, that could be really annoying sometimes. For the hunting grounds, patrol chests now have an audio queue to help slayers locate them in the hunting grounds. They added a global audio queue to let players know when an event has started in the hunting grounds. And lastly, they removed the Rift Stalker from the duo fight in the Toxic Behavior Island event. Uh, it was already pretty toxic, so uh, glad that's a little more manageable now. Moving on, we have some UI updates. Uh, weapon skill level now displays in the airship lobby before escalation and trials hunts they had this originally and then got rid of it looks like they're bringing it back i guess people complained about not knowing um, they added appropriate damage color to the description of damage types new icons were added to the crafting menus to show which items are ready to craft or power surge and lastly the slayer xp icon is now gold and the xp bar has been adjusted to match the xp icon so a little more shiny UI there. For the quests, skipped rumor steps now carry over if you reset your account progress. You can now preview your rumor rewards from the Hunt Pass overview screen. Um, assuming this is just an additional place to look at it, besides going and talking to Oz every time. Uh, rumor steps that have a skip option now display the platinum costs in their overview description as well, where they didn't before. For escalation, they improved the description of the Avatar of Unity. It should now be easier to understand. I just made a video for the Avatar of Unity. You guys should go check it out. The best support build that I've ever come up with. Really, really fun build. Um, curious what they changed for the wording or if anything major changed. Um, they changed the insulated gear talent to fur lined gear to avoid confusion with the insulated perk. And lastly, for cosmetics, they added a new dye region for the fur area on the Warden Defenders Brigand. Or balance changes and this is a big one a lot of you guys have been wanting this Urska's tail now has 6,000 less health and is easier to break as well they increased Urska's health by 10% which will give us more time to break the parts on Urska so really really good changes there definitely needed to be done 
Uh, the tail had way too much health. Uh, moving on to Escalation, they increased the Avatar of Control's stagger from 30% to 50%. The Frozen Armor talent now grants an additional 25 health each round. Virulent Impact is now a rare amp in the Terror Escalation, increased from Common, so we won't see it as frequently anymore. And then lastly, the Avatar of Destruction no longer has an internal cooldown. It now reduces Frostbite buildup with each critical hit. This is a really strong buff here, especially have a high crit chance build. Um, it's going to make managing that Frostbite meter a lot easier now for you Destruction Avatar players. We're really good there. Uh, for Trials, the Last Stand mod re has been removed from the Trials normal difficulty, which will allow us to have three self-revives instead of just one. Uh, starting on March 4th, Trials will now reset at 10 a.m. PT instead of 2 a.m. to bring it in line, I'm assuming, with all the other reset events. Uh, so that's good. The perks, they increase the amount of shielding provided by Fortress uh, from 200 at plus 6 uh, to 200 at plus 6 from 100. So a lot of these, it looks like they almost doubled it. And it will now stack up to three times. So for those longer hunts, who knows? Maybe Fortress will become a more viable support perk there. So I'll have to test that out. For gameplay, they increased the Broadside Lantern's hold ability damage to 750 up from 650, so a 100 point increase there. It increased the Skarn's Defiance Lantern Tap ability duration to 12 seconds, up from 6 seconds. And they mounted attacks. Uh, the mounted attacks will no longer generate a stamina shield if you're wearing the Skullforge Helm. So interesting changes to the Lanterns. Uh, Warpike, lastly, has reduced animation duration between the 4th and 5th inputs on the light attack combo, making it a little more responsive. For weapon bug fixes, the hammer, they fixed the hammer's uppercut input buffer to make the combo easier to pull off. They fixed an issue where dodging out of the hammer charge would continue the charge after the button was released. And dodging out of a hammer charge attack will now correctly update the charged ammo in the UI. Good change there. For the chain blades, they fixed an issue where tapping the light attack during a blade spin combo instead of holding it would completely ignore the input. And they also improved an issue where Reaper's Dance is sometimes hitting an invisible wall. Uh, I had a lot of people commenting about floating up in the air too much or just completely missing the mark when they're dashing back in. It looks like it's a little bit stickier now, so hopefully that fixes that issue. For swords, the Hypothermica sword, uh, Erska's sword, now has the correct power surge recipe requirements. The axe has been, uh, they fixed an issue where the axe charge attacks can be held indefinitely. Uh, looks like they're properly going to reduce stamina now, so that's good. Nezaga's larger lightning orbs can no longer pass through the behemoth and now behave the same as their smaller lightning orbs. Uh, for Urska, the Urska claw swipes will now hit the player when they correctly contact them. Uh, while enraged, Urska's eyes will glow red before they were appearing under his body, so you couldn't visually see uh, well enough if he was enraged or not. So good visual update there. And you should also see Urska's tooth and tail pieces on the ground when they're officially broken. So good visual update there as well. For Malkyrian, uh, the sync attack and trials officially does damage now. Not, uh, I can't really uh, uh, cheat it now. <laughs> Riftstalker, they fixed an issue where Riftstalkers could teleport outside of its arena in the hunting grounds. Saw this a lot actually during the Cape Furry farm when I was doing the Shadow Touch, uh, Shadow Touch Koshai. <laughs> I can't talk right now. Um, yeah, Riftstalker was just teleporting to a totally different island past the warp vents. Uh, so it looks like they fixed that. Nasher, they fixed an issue where Deep Frost Nashers would try to use their tail attack even though their tail had been severed. Skarn no longer uses green aether to control their rocks. It is now an icy blue color. Pangar, they fixed an issue where the rolling sound effect would continue to play even if it was killed during its rolling state. And lastly, Ember Mains, uh, Deep Frost Ember Mains now howl when entering their aether charge state. Uh, moving on for the hunting grounds, they fixed a bug where certain behemoths were not spawning in the hunting grounds, and they fixed multiple instances of level zero behemoths spawning in events. Uh, for escalations, they fixed a bug where the lantern capacitors overview menu was displaying escalations as plus 50 power and resistance at level 25, but was actually giving plus 150 power under the hood. The UI should now display the correct level, and they are also reducing the actual power and resistance bonus from 150 to 100, which will ultimately make the escalations a little bit harder, so keep that in mind. Fixed a bug where leveling up in Frost Escalation would not grant a corresponding power bonus. Reapplying Spiteful Evasion and Spiteful Onslaught 
while one is currently active will now correctly refresh it to its full duration. Uh, and lastly, fixed an issue where Behemoths wouldn't spawn on the 4th and 5th arena of the Umbral Escalation. For quest updates, they fixed a bug preventing players from finishing the Far and Away and Spore Problems quests. The main attraction part 7, big issues here, now specifies the correct damage type requirement. We also have a similar issue with this within the Shadow Touch Koshai uh, rumor. It uh, says you just have to do 4k damage, but you actually have to do the 4k damage while the behemoth is enraged. It doesn't actually say that in the rumor text. So hopefully they update those newer ones as well. And lastly, paying platinum to skip a quest will no longer consume the other items required for that step. Uh, as for gameplay adjustments, collectible buffs such as those spawned from the captain's grip will correctly play their visual and audio effect when collected. They fixed an issue where slayers transition back to running animations after falling off an edge fixed an issue that caused slayers to get stuck in an endless falling animation on ledges, fixed an issue where behemoths spawn objects such as Scrave's Blizzard Totem would spawn underground and out of reach, as if it couldn't be any more annoying, so I'm glad they fixed that, that, excuse me, fixed an issue where some arenas in the hunting grounds had invisible walls blocking behemoth visibility, uh, weapon sheathing is now automatic when changing loadouts, this prevents players from getting stuck with invisible weapons, uh, they fixed an issue where weapons wouldn't be correctly attached to the player after sheathing or unsheathing them. So good gameplay updates there. And then lastly for the UI, let's see if we got some good ones in here. Uh, players can now properly use the striker's crafting menu with a controller. This is huge. I don't know if this is the same issue that I was getting. A lot of people commented in my videos about the PS4 and console issues with the Scarred Master Strikers vendor where they, the menu was just completely frozen. They couldn't even access it. A uh, few people on Reddit said that the quick fix for that was to talk to the vendor with Strikers actually equipped before you talk to her, and that seemed to fix it. Uh, apparently now, hopefully it'll work no matter what. Uh, fixed a bug where players would not see a DPS meter in the training grounds. Repeater's crafting UI is now on par with the rest of the crafting screens. They increased the range for the daily coin toss and core breaker interactions. They fixed a bug where crafting or upgrading item would not update the UI. Discounted offers that grant the player platinum are now marked as on sale uh, for all platforms. They fixed a bug where quest markers would not show up in the UI during hunts. Fixed a bug where the hunt button in the main menu would show a quest marker even if there was no hunt related quests. Removed old mastery objectives to upgrade Quillshot's Javelin, the Warpike, to level 10. They fixed incorrect descriptions for the Warpike nodes on the Slayer's Path. They did announce that the Warpike uh, buffs only work on war pikes now but in the descriptions it was still saying all weapons so it looks like they fixed the text on a lot of this to make it more accurate players can now clear notifications on behemoth journal entries the dire mastery cards now list the correct behemoth names the hold to revive icon is no longer displayed if a down player is out of reach they fixed a bug where rumors and quests sometimes showed inaccurate icons above the npcs and lastly the slayer links experience bar now updates automatically you no longer have to exit and re-enter the menu to see progress. Moving on to cosmetics, the titles Crimson Cavalier and Crimson Blade now have their rarity tier set correctly. I'm assuming it was lower and it needed to be legendary. Uh, fixed very, various issues where, uh, which were causing Slayers to appear jittery during their arrival animations. Fixed various armor clipping issues with a ton of different weapons or different armor. Uh, fix the gone fishing emote so that it correctly syncs with the player's character and lastly fixed an issue where the frog in the splashdown arrival animation was invisible almost done for performance changing weapons or loadout slots in the equipment screen will no longer briefly stall the game and they fixed various crashes related to memory issues so good performance changes there and lastly for audio updates they improved the overall mix for all weapon and ability sounds coming from nearby slayers so big big changes there I'm um, really glad they reduced the damage threshold on Urska's tail and updated that a little bit. We're getting those heroic dies now within rumors, so that's a really cool update. And uh, I'm really glad they fixed the armor look on the, the Hunt Pass armor. Uh, it was nowhere near what the concept art looked like, so really cool update there. Definitely a lot better look, but yeah, that is all the updates with patch 1.5.4. If you guys found this video helpful, be sure to smash that like button, comment down below. I appreciate your guys' feedback. And as always, if you're not already subscribed or a member of the Glitch Gang, then consider hitting that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of my future uploads. Hope you guys had a great day.
and I'll catch you all in the next one. Later. Thanks so much for watching you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. Also, if you're looking to join a killer community of like-minded gamers, then be sure to click the link in the description and join the Glitch Gang Discord server. We continue to grow every day and it's filled with all your favorite game discussion channels as well as several LFG channels to help you find that perfect group for your next hunt or raid. Lastly, if you're new to the channel and want to keep up to date with all my future content, then consider hitting that subscribe button and turn on those notifications. Hope you all had a great day and I will catch you on the next one.